Hi, Tom here. I'd like to take this moment to offer a friendly, helpful hint for any Canadians who may be wanting to travel to the United States at any point in the near future, uh, as a bit of a translation of one of the finer points in American culture. When you go to uh, Tim Hortons up there and order a double-double, you get this. But if you happen to go to an In-N-Out down here in the States and order a double-double, you'll be getting this. Big difference. Just thought I'd let you know. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Canada Week on Tom's Hit Parade, continuing my week-long love letter to my favorite music of the Land of the Maple Leaf, assuming that's a nickname of Canada. Yes, the nation of Canada. Yes, fun sharing my favorite music of Canada with you all. Some of which, uh, some of whom are Canadians themselves and may not know of uh, some of the albums in the list I'm going to present today, which is my favorite Canadian albums of all time. And by Canadian albums, I simply mean albums put out by Canadian artists. They may have been available in the States, they may have only been available in Canada as imports to the United States, but again, in recognition of the ten provinces and three territories of Canada, and yes, I've done my homework so I know the difference between the two, uh, I will be presenting my list of my top 13 favorite Canadian albums, along with five honorable mentions. So let's uh, run those honorable mentions down right off the bat. First of all is Primary Colors, the second album by Canadian reggae pop rock group Magic. Uh, yes, all the attention went on their first album and the big hit single from that, Rude. But honestly, this band has so much more to offer than just that one one hit wonder of a hit single. Uh, their second album, I think, edges out their first album in for me in terms of uh, just listenability and over overall Canadian goodness, sumptuous, sumptuous Canadian goodness. Uh, but yes, uh, Magic Primary Colors is my one of the five uh, honorable mentions of favorite Canadian album of all time. Another one, uh, this one, as with most of these honorable mentions, I hesitated, uh, almost put in my actual top 13, and this was probably the one that was most uh, edging, wanting to edge itself into the actual countdown. Brand New History, the sophomore album by industrial rock band Econoline Crush. And uh, for those of you who have not heard of them, uh, they're just a great, uh, kind of a hard rock band. I think maybe fans of Nine Inch Nails might uh, like this band, so I don't know if Kyle from Track by Track, I don't know if you actually watch my videos or not, it'd be way cool if you did, but you love Nine Inch Nails, so if you haven't tried Econoline Crush, check them out. And um, I mean, also, honestly, this has enough mainstream appeal uh, that I think anybody, even fan, people who are not necessarily fans of industrial rock or hard rock would like this these guys, and not to mention their first album, which I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head, sorry about that, but uh, yeah great rock band, Econoline Crush. Check out both of their uh, first two albums. They've put out more, but their first two are the only ones that I have, so yeah, great band to listen to if you have not checked them out yet. The third one, uh, I mentioned an album or an artist in my favorite artists countdown a couple of days ago that uh, was kind of like Savage Garden, except uh, they were more acoustic than they were synth-driven. Well, this band is actually much more like uh, Savage Garden in that they are synth a synth-driven pop band. They're a duo, duo from Canada, of course. Their name was Sky, and uh, there, there have been at least one other band called Sky out there, and I think they were a classic rock band from the 60s and 70s. Different band. These guys formed in the 90s, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. this album's from 1998. Uh, this is their debut album, Piece of Paradise. Uh, a wonderful album. If you like Savage Garden or that, uh, that synth-driven pop uh, sound that Savage Garden made famous, this is going to be right up your alley. Or if you like synth-pop music in general. Yeah, Piece of Paradise by Sky, and their sophomore album, which also I can't remember the name of, <laughs> yay for notes, uh, was also pretty darn good as well. It had a lot of great hooks in it, but yeah. And this other one, uh, as I said, with most of these honorable mentions, I had a hard time not putting them in the actual countdown. This is another one. She was one of my favorite Canadian artists, was well within my countdown of favorite Canadian artists. Diana Krall, her album Quiet Nights. It is one of her more bossa nova sound driven albums. You know, bossa nova is not my favorite thing, um, but just this album for some reason just sticks out in my mind as being one of her better ones. Uh, it's got a couple of um, songs by uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, the, who wrote some of the songs in here. Obviously, if you're going to have bossa nova music, you're going to have some hits from Jobim, but uh, some other songs as well. Just a very wonderful album, and all of her discography is great, but uh, this one, for me, is a standout. 
And uh, rounding out the honorable mentions uh, is uh, another one who was, uh, she was actually in my list of favorite artists of all time, but this one didn't quite edge into the actual countdown, but is an honorable mention. Surfacing by Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, just, you know, it's one of the one of the best examples of her uh, of their, her style. Uh, Building a Mystery, the lead-off track is one of my favorites. And of course this has her smash hit song Angel on it. But yeah, all the songs on this album are just great. She's just one of the best uh, female singer-songwriters ever to come out of Canada. Sarah McLaughlin, uh, give her album Surfacing a try. It's fantastic. And now on to my actual countdown at the top 13. Uh, and again, you might uh, roll your eyes, maybe cringe, or stick up your nose at uh, the low placement of some of these on my list. But just, you know, disclaimer, that's why I call my lists my favorite instead of the best. Favorites lists can change over time, so, you know, I might... Uh, a lot of these albums may grow on me. Some of the albums might ungrow on me, I don't know. But uh, as, as of right now, this is where these albums stand in my countdown. There's just so much good music out there that some of the albums had to be further down on the list, and this is one of those that you might roll your eyes at for being so low on my countdown. Ingenue by Katie Lang, uh, her pretty much her signature album. It has her hits Constant Craving in it, and uh, Miss Chatelaine is another one of her great songs. Uh, but this, this album is pretty much wall-to-wall -wall with fantastic songs. Uh, it, it was kind of hard for me to pick a uh, best album by Katie Lang, and this might be a stereotypical choice, a, a default choice, if you will. But there's a reason for it. I mean, it's, it's just a, a great album, one of the best examples of Katie Lang's songwriting and artistry. Wonderful. Number 12, uh, I have uh, spotlit on my uh, In a Bargain Bag video before, so uh, I've said pretty much all that can be said about this album, so this will be a quick mention, but I had to have it on my list of all-time favorite Canadian albums. It is Tal Beckman's uh, self-titled debut album. It's just a fantastic uh, array of songs from the son of Randy Beckman of Beckman Turner Overdrive. Uh, he's he made for a name for himself with this album. It was a, a f I guess not a not a big hit in the states. Uh, it made the Heat Seekers chart, but I don't think it actually ever made the Billboard 200. But uh, honestly, uh, it got underappreciated uh, to a very heavy degree, in my opinion. This should have been easily on the Billboard 200. Uh, just a, a packed with great songs. I, I just love this album so much, uh, and it's why it's in my countdown. I'll probably say that a few times during this video, but hey, whatever, you know several of these names, the artist names you will have heard in my favorite artists countdown. Uh, this is Crazy Love by Michael Bublé is my number 11 favorite Canadian album of all, of all time. Uh, the biggest reason I put this one on my list is because of his original song, Haven't Met You Yet. It's just a wonderful song. Wonderful song I have. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. Just the, the lyrical message is just great in this in that song. And of course, like all of his other albums, just his fantastic voice and the selection of the material is just excellent and plus this album has appearances by Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings and Ron Sexsmith. He has an Eagles cover on here, Heartache Tonight, which he does a fantastic job on. So yeah, I mean, you pretty much can't go wrong with a Michael Bublé album, but if you pick one to listen to, listen to Crazy Love. It's just fantastic. And now, number 10. This is going to be very much of an eye roll for a lot of you. A lot of you probably just won't understand unless you listen to the album. Let me just uh, reveal what it is right now uh, before I go any further. Has been by William Shatner. Yes, William Shatner, I know. Serious eye rolls going on right now, but you have to listen to this album to appreciate it. Uh, it is produced by Ben Folds, believe it or not, uh, and it has a huge array of guest stars. Uh, Henry Rollins, uh, Brad Paisley and some others that I know I'm going to be forgetting that I are not coming to mind right now, but uh, it's just an excellent album and it's very heartfelt uh, songwriting. It's it's hard to imagine that with William Shatner, but again, you got to listen to the album. Some of these songs are very personal to him, and he wrote a lot of the lyrics, I think, if, if I recall correctly. But and yeah, just I, I can't articulate myself very well with some of these. I, let's face it, that, that, that's one of my downfalls, I know, but. Uh, there's a song on here called You'll Have Time, which uh, deals with... Uh, he's facing the fact that he's growing older. And, I mean, this album was put out in 2004, so it's already 15 years old. But, uh, you know, he's he's been getting older for a while. Uh, he does a cover of the pulp song Common People, which actually kicks off the album. You know, so some some of the songs obviously are funny. Because uh, that's, you know, that's, you know, 
people who listen to a Shatner album are going to expect some funny songs, but there are some very, very personal songs on here also. The song Real, which is, closes the album, is the one that uh, guest stars Brad Paisley, who, who with whom Shatner has collaborated a few times over the years. And that one deals with uh, Shatner having trouble with people treating him as Captain Kirk instead of as William Shatner, a, a regular person. So, And, and that's a really... Uh, a personal song, honestly. It's got its funny lyrics, but it's more heartfelt as well. And there's a song on here called What Have You Done, which is probably the most poignant and personal song on here. It deals with when uh, William Shatner found his wife deceased in the family swimming pool. It's a very, very personal song, very heart-wrenching. But, uh, you know, honestly, this this album has so many facets. I mean, the, the cover art, in a way, uh, depicts the, uh, the very personal nature of this album. So, it didn't get the justice that it deserved. It's uh, it's very it's worth a listen, honestly. Uh, if you can deal with Shatner's uh, speak singing style, uh, it's just oh, it's a wonderful, fantastic album. And there's you know obviously reason why I have it at number ten of on my favorite albums, favorite Canadian albums of all time. Okay, number nine in my list of my favorite Canadian albums of all time. This is going to be the first one in the countdown proper that uh, very few, if any people have heard of, especially outside of Canada. This is a group called Beast. They are out of Montreal, I believe, and they their sound is pretty much indescribable. It's a, a blend of hip-hop and soul and funk, and even a little bit of gospel is in this. Uh, it's just a real a stew of, uh, of musical styles, uh, even a little bit of hard rock in there. I don't know if I mentioned that a minute ago. But uh, Check out the song. I know it's on uh, most streaming services. The, the album in whole is probably on streaming services. But the song Mr. Hurricane by Beast. Check out that song. That will pretty much encapsulate the variety of sounds that you're likely to hear on this album. It is just... It's so indescribable. And that is one of the reasons why Mr. Hurricane is one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, Canadian or otherwise. It's just fantastic. And that's what this entire album is like. It's just... As I said, it's pretty much indescribable. It's just a, a multitude of genres jam-packed into one album. Uh, it's just I, I I can't recommend this album enough. I mean, it's it's only number nine in my countdown, so we're only getting better from here. But uh, yeah, just check out Beast if you haven't yet. Uh, and it's going to be a little, little hard to find because there are a few artists by the name of Beast. But I think this was the only album that this Beast group uh, ever made. And uh, fortunately, somebody saw fit to put it out in, here in America under the Verve Forecast label. So I was able to, I, and I just happened upon it. The cover art looked intriguing, and I think I picked it up without ever hearing anything from it. Uh, and I just, you know, I struck gold with it, uh, pun intended, with the cover of the album. Uh, number eight on my list is another artist, probably, that very few people have heard of. But he is a young singer-songwriter, or at least he was young when he put this album out. And I think this is his only uh, solo album, at least his only major label album. But he's continued to work in music. He's actually even worked in acting and musical theater as well. His name is Kyle Ryabko, and this was his debut album, Before I Speak, and is just a fantastic, wonderful mixture of rock and soul and blues and funk, and it's just, this guy was, I think he was still a teenager when he put this album out, but his talent was just years and years beyond that, uh, just fantastic on the guitar, a great voice, uh, excellent songwriting, I mean, I can't say enough about this album, it's just uh a very unsung hero in each of Canadian music, and he should have gotten a lot more attention with this album than he did. Just, uh, yeah, just Before I Speak by Kyle Ryabko. I'm having trouble speaking, ironically, with uh, this album. So, yeah, check it out, uh, especially if you like the, you know, singer-songwriter rock soul blues with a little bit of funk in it. You cannot go wrong with that. And now, lucky number seven. And this is one that you have heard of before, a very, very prominent album in uh, Canadian music and in music in general. Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette, her smash hit American Breakthrough that I hinted at in my artists, favorite artists countdown a couple of days ago. How can you go wrong with this album? If, if you've not heard this album, what rock have you been living under? Honestly, uh, it's just <laughs> packed with great songs. You Oughta Know, Hand in My Pocket, You Learn, Head Over Feet, and of course, Ironic, which many of the situations uh, talked about in the lyrics were actually not irony, but that aside, uh, I'm just going to chalk that up to the quirky Canadianness of it. Uh, but yeah, just a fantastic album. It is an absolute classic of 90s rock and rock in general for a very, very good reason. This album honestly doesn't even need me to say anything about it if you haven't listened to it yet. As I said, you've got to check it out. Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. 
And uh, yes, that's, some of you might be wondering why that one isn't higher up on my list, but uh, well, this is my list, so there. Uh, number six, I believe. Losing count. I didn't put sticky notes on these to uh, tell me where I was in the countdown, so my bad. Uh, number six on my countdown is another one that uh, a lot of people in the States have probably heard of, and again, he is, uh, you know, probably hesitated putting him this high on the countdown for the simple uh, circumstantial fact that he is half Canadian, half American. And you, if you watched my favorite artists, you know who I'm talking about, Rufus Wainwright. This is his self-titled debut album. Just a wonderful album. Uh, I, I, I'm probably saying that with every album on this countdown, but uh, I'm at a loss for words, I guess, in some respects. But yeah, just uh, this was an amazing album for someone his first time out. Uh, and he was, uh, I'm pretty sure he was openly gay at the time he put this album out. So, you know, it was one of the pioneer pioneering artists who was openly gay right off the bat with his first album. And that's just one milestone that uh, Rufus Wainwright uh, is responsible for. Uh, just and this, this, just the style of this album is so very different from everything else that you would hear on pop radio back at that time. Some Baroque and uh, chamber pop influences, some stuff from a little bit of uh, stuff from pretty much every decade in the past, back to like the 30s, would be found here and there in the songs in this album. Uh, Foolish Love, April Fools is one of my favorites. Matinee Idol is a fantastic song. Uh, Barcelona, I mean. Every song on this album is just fantastic. If you're if you're in the mood for a truly unique listening experience, check out Rufus Wainwright. Uh, pretty much any of his albums, but his uh, debut album, he just he kicked it off with a bang with this album. Honestly, wonderful album. And now here we are in the top five of my favorite Canadian albums of all time. Uh, this one probably should have been higher on my list, considering where they were in my ranking of my favorite Canadian artists of all time. But uh, yes, I, the, that mystery is pretty much over. It is Bare Naked Ladies. This is my favorite album of theirs, Born on a Pirate Ship. Uh, the default choice for a lot of people would probably be Stunt, just because of their smash hit song One Week, which which was a an American breakthrough. I mean, honestly, that was probably considered their breakthrough in America. But honestly, as I mentioned in my favorite artists countdown, I've been with them since day one. This album was one, the one that was released pretty much at my height, the height of my fandom of theirs if I'm making sense with that uh, questionable grammar. But yeah, just this album is just absolutely wall-to-wall -wall with great songs. Uh, this Is Where It Ends is one of their best songs, and this is where they really started getting into the uh, personal lyrics, the serious lyrics, the poignant songwriting, and uh, the you know they started really demonstrating their real artistry with this album. The Old Apartment is one of the absolute standouts. It's, it's one of their hardest rocking songs, but it's fantastic. Uh, Break Your Heart is one of my favorite ballads ever of all time. That is just, go listen to that song like as soon as you're done with this video. Listen to Break Your Heart by Bare Naked Ladies if you haven't yet. Fantastic song. Uh, Shoebox, which closes the album, was actually the centerpiece of the EP that they put out right before this album. So that was kind of an, an advanced uh, advanced hit on this uh, for this album. But yeah, I mean, and I'm just naming a few of the songs. Every song on this album is excellent. And an, another great thing about this album is with at least one song, or maybe two. Uh, the the one song that I'm aware of right now is Spider in My Room. They brought in a First Nations, or Native North American, uh, group called uh, Stony Park to do percussion and backing uh, on the album, uh, on the song Spider in My Room. And I've always had a soft spot for Native Americans, or First Nations, as they're known in Canada groups. They're one of the um, ethnic groups that I've had the most, the absolute utmost respect for in my life, even though I don't have a drop of Native, Amer Native American blood in me. But uh, yeah, that was just a standout uh, track on this album. Just Born on a Pirate Ship by Bare Naked Ladies is my favorite BNL album of all time, and my number five favorite Canadian album of all time. On into number four, here is a classic artist from Canada. And uh, yeah, he is, uh, an this is another one that uh, you might be surprised is not higher up in my top two or top three. Uh, but hey, it's as close as you can get to the top three without it being in the top three, right? Uh, number four, uh, it is Reckless by Brian Adams. This was, uh, pro I believe this was his most successful album. And just look at the track listing on this thing. This is absolutely jam-packed. One Night Love Affair, uh, Run to You, Heaven, Summer of 69, The Kids Want to Rock. Uh, so <laughs> you, you can't go wrong with this al album. Pretty much put it on, on any track and you're going to hit a radio hit, just about. Uh, but 
surely you're going to hit a great song when no matter what track you put on but yeah this this pretty much cemented brian adams popularity in the states i'm sure he was already a, a huge hit in canada himself his homeland but uh, yeah this is just one of the best albums from canada ever and it is my fourth favorite album from canada of all time so just like that we have reached the top three are you ready to hear my top three favorite canadian albums of all time well, tune in tomorrow, because I've decided to make a separate video for that. Uh, yes, I, for one reason, I had trouble figuring out what to make a fifth video for, but I think I've got enough to say about those top three albums that uh, I've decided to make an entirely separate video for those, uh, for that, for the grand finale of Canada Week here on Tom's Hit Parade. So be sure and tune in tomorrow for my top three favorite Canadian albums of all time. It's going to be a doozy and a wonderful fitting way to close Canada Week here on Top's Hit Parade. But uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.